Welcome to day 10 of our January challenge 2021 and more rolled chords today. I'm going to play from yesterday into today so that you can hear how it all fits together and then we'll focus in on bar 33. So I'm starting at 29 just now. Here we go. Three and four and... So if we look in at bar 33, again, we spot that similar left hand moving through. Also, our right hand is doing the same thing as the bars above. So the only change really in these next two bars is that our left hand, instead of having the minim or half note G, it does the GD. Okay, but otherwise, we've got the same right hand going on, the E, B, D. Then the second half then, so looking at bar 33, 4, 35, we're moving higher up the harp. As we go higher up here, we want to be conscious of really being rich with our sound, not allowing it to be harsh just because we're on shorter, thinner strings, but actually really compensating for that by how beautifully we play. And more than ever, I think it's it matters um, certainly to me that if you have your elbow out, you're less likely to end up down there, which forces that hand up. Um, as we get higher up, yes, effectively neither finger nor thumb end up in the absolute sweet spot. But if you put your finger twos in the sweet spot, your thumb will be hitting the top of the harp and playing in a very harsh place. So you allow them to balance around that middle line, mid length spot of the strings. Okay, so we are on bar 35. We have B, E, G. Then that pattern moves up to D, G, B. Then we have an F triad. So F is the bass note, F, A, C. Opening up then C, F, A and taking that up one to D, G, B. Okay. We're trying to let that last note be the one that comes through. So our thumb. So again, more than ever, allow it to bend over. Okay. And I want to just sort of remind you that that doesn't mean put a lot of force through the thumb, but giving it that place that I want it to land there will do the right physics that makes your pluck a beautiful quality sound. Okay. So let's give this section ago and we'll start at bar 35 just that we're trying this right hand and we'll just do the right hand on its own to really listen to that top sound so starting at bar 35 so we're on b e and g in the right here's our counting three and four and one and and three and 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 okay tadium Tadium, tadium. Okay, keeping thinking about that tadium feel. Um, don't try too hard. Don't sort of emphasize any other note other than the thumb. You're leading to the thumb. Everything else is a bonus. Okay, and then if we put that over the left hand, same place, bar 35. So our left hand starting down on that C, G. We've got that pattern going up, going up one, and then the G minim or half note to finish. Okay. So, count you in, bar 35, three and four and... Tadiel. And... Lovely, okay, and then we'll put the whole line together, starting back at bar 33 then. Okay, so remember this is the same as how yesterday started. Um, and same left hand, just the quavers changing at the end of the second bar. 
don't panic just go with it you're fine here we go three and four and <laughs> And if ever there was a place where it really mattered about how comfortable you were with your left hand and how little attention you needed to give your left hand, I think those last two bars are it. Because you're, you're right up here. It's an odd focal point. It's, it's slightly, you almost want to pull your head away to look at it. It's right up close to your face level. So at that point, to be watching where that's going, you really do want your left hand to be an automatic pilot just moving to where it goes next without you having to think too hard. So as ever, the groundwork that you put in in the early days really support what you do now. Okay, join me for the play along videos. We'll try it at various different speeds. Okay, keep thinking about beautiful sound and the bending of the thumb to really make that top melody rich. Okay, well done.